What's going on, y'all? I'm Czar, and I want to give you my review of the Sand Hill 6019A. This is a ribbon microphone that Sand Hill is calling the Unbreakable Long Ribbon Microphone. More on that in a second. First, I want to give a shout out to Front End Audio for making this review possible. So I'll admit, I have very little experience with ribbon microphones. I've used a Royer 121 on a guitar cab once, and that's been my extent of experience with ribbon microphones. So I was very excited to check this out. Let's get into some specs. So this being a ribbon mic, of course we have a figure eight polar pattern, a frequency response of 20 Hertz up to 15 K and a very impressive max SPL of 154 DB and a huge fan of this, but every Sand Hill mic comes with its own data sheet, which is kind of like a birth certificate for the microphone. So let's talk about why Sand Hill calls this the unbreakable long ribbon microphone. So as audio engineers, we've always been taught that ribbon microphones are very delicate. Don't blow directly into the microphone because you could damage the ribbon. If you store it improperly, the ribbon can sag. And by all means, do not apply phantom power to a ribbon mic. Well, Sand Hill has resolved all of these delicate issues with ribbon microphones. For one, this microphone is an active ribbon microphone, so it actually requires phantom power in order to work. And the body is aluminum and steel definitely allowing it to be able to take a drop or two if such happens. Let's take a listen to some examples. So we'll start with a recording from Sarah Tillman. Uh, we got three tracks here. The top track is an acoustic guitar. Second track is a vocal and the third track is a vocal with the 40K air band on the Mog EQ2 cranked all the way. The Mog Airband is popular on ribbon mics since by reputation ribbon mics are darker mics. So give an example of that as well. All three of these tracks were recorded with the 6019A and the preamp that was used is a Rupert Nee 511 with no silk. So we'll start with the acoustic guitar and the vocal without the airband. No other processing on these tracks. I uh, do have a little bit of reverb and delay. I broke your heart, I put it back together. My friends are dumb, they do so much better. Uh, could you please come back? Without you, my heart lacks the good it used to feel. Just want to feel something real. And now let's take a listen to it with the air band. I broke your heart, I put it back together. My friends are dumb, baby, so much better. Oh, could you please come back? Without you, my heart lacks the good it used to feel. Just want to feel something real. And now go ahead and solo just the guitar for a little bit. And the vocal. I broke your heart, I put it back together. My friends are dumb, they do so much better. Oh, could you please come back? Without you, my heart lacks the good it used to feel. Just want to feel something real. Okay, so I'm really impressed with these two examples. Let's start with the acoustic guitar. So I noticed that the 6019A has some, it has a lot of a low end to it. And on the vocal, I don't feel like there's really any EQ that needs to be done, which I'm always happy with a vocal that's recorded that I don't have to make EQ moves. I would add a little bit of air to it. So I do like what the air band is doing to it. It may be a little excessive. I did crank it all the way just to hear what that would sound like. But even without adding some air to it, for this to still be a microphone on the darker side it's not as dark as i thought it would be and even though it is a little dark it still has a lot of clarity which i would not expect from something that would i would consider dark uh, let's take a listen to some more examples
So we've got some instruments here. We've got a distorted guitar, bass guitar, saxophone, and drums, all recorded with the 6019A, and the preamp that is used is the API 512V. So we'll start with the distorted guitar, and below each of these, I have a track of the same thing recorded with a SM57, just to give you a sense of a comparison. So here is the 6019A on distorted guitar. And the SM57 on distorted guitar. Two very different tones. Again, the 6019A has a lot of bottom end. L bass guitar. Here's the 6019A. And the SM57. And saxophone, 6019A. And the SM57. And for the drums, we set the 6019A and the SM57, uh, I'd say about maybe two feet back from the kit. And here is the 6019A. and the SM57. Okay, so for all of these examples, I prefer the 6019A. Again, the SM57 was just something to compare it to, but I really like the low end response that you get out of the 6019A. So I really like it on instruments that's tailored more towards that low end like bass guitar. Uh, the saxophone was really warm and smooth, whereas the SM57 on it started to get uh, just some stuff up in the high mids that I just didn't want to hear and started to sound a little harsh to me. So the smoothness that this mic has as it rolls off the top end is really nice. And I'm really surprised with the, again, with the detail that you get, especially in the low mids here with the 6019A. So my overall thoughts on the 6019A. This mic really exceeded my expectations, especially on vocals. I'm not a fan of dark when it comes to vocals, and though this mic is a little dark, it's not something I would consider very dark, but even though it's a little dark, I could totally look past that for the warmth and detail that you get. I mean, everything else in the frequency range was just so smooth on the vocal that all it needed to do was boost a little high end if you needed to help it cut through in a mix, and I am fine with doing that. I mean, adding that airband gets you the high end that you want and you still have the warmth and character of a ribbon mic along with it and even without the airband you still have detail there in the vocal which is something i just wasn't expecting at all and with this mic being a little darker on top i can really see this being good for vocalists who have 
uh, a S problem. If your S's are sticking out really bad or with an artist, I would definitely look at this mic because it can certainly help tame some of those S's with it rolling off the top end. On the bass guitar, uh, that the low end that you're getting out of the 6019A, I really like that on bass guitar. So anything with your low frequency, uh, drums, bass guitar, uh, I even like the distorted guitar versus the SM57 on there for the 6019A. So very impressed with this microphone. I like the fact that it is a active ribbon because you don't have to find a mic preamp with a whole bunch of gain to use with this microphone. You can use it with any mic preamp. Just add your 48 volts phantom power and give it 30 to 40 dB of gain and you should be good. And the Sandhill Audio is coming from Finland, coming into the U.S. market. I'm also glad to see some competition here because when you think of ribbon mics here in the States, uh, I'd say AEA is the most popular, and then you've got uh, Cloud Microphones, Royer. But my point being, there's not that many people in the space of ribbon mics in the States, so definitely glad to see another player come in. And I've got a link in the description if you want to learn more about this mic or check it out. Uh, the price on this is $1,769 U.S., and uh, any questions, comments, let me know, and I'll catch y'all next time. I want to invite you to check out my podcast, The Faders Up Podcast, where we discuss pro audio and beyond. We discuss everything from recording to gear to the music business. So if you're an audio engineer, songwriter, recording artist, music producer, this podcast is for you. We recently started season two, and we're going to have a lot of listener questions on this season, as well as some really cool guests that's lined up and giveaways as well. So if you've already subscribed and followed the podcast, thank you. If you haven't, it's available on all platforms and I encourage you to check it out. Also rate it and review it and let us know what you think.